So welcome to our TCS in Action webinar. Um, today we'll be featuring Romain Garcia from PTC. And Romain is the manager of a group that's responsible for both the KDE and coaching functions at PTC. And there's been a lot of discussion in the TCS community about whether KDE should be full-time or part-time. There's also been discussion on best practices for how the coach and the KDE should work together. And Romaine's gonna share PTC's thoughts on both of those questions. Um, PTC has been experimenting with a new approach for KDEs and coaching um, for the past 18 months and is ready to share their results, uh, lessons learned, and what they found to be the best practices. So some housekeeping before we begin, this session is being recorded and will be posted on the KCS Academy site, as well as uh, sent out to all who have registered. And again, please make sure that you're on mute uh, and please post your questions in chat. We're very fortunate that we have uh, Pierre Marinke and he's the Senior Director of Knowledge uh, Management and Digital Services at PTC. And he's gonna be monitoring the chat and we'll either answer them in the chat, bring them up to remain in the flow or actually uh, take himself off mute and answer or save them for the Q&A session at the end. And we also wanna make sure you're aware of upcoming KCS Academy events. So on January 24th, uh, Christina Rusin and Laurence Lishi will discuss how Akamai's KDEs turn data into continuous improvement. I think that's February 24th. Oh, did I say January? Yes. yes. Oh, my apologies. So yeah, February 24th, thank you. And then in uh, late uh, March, um, we'll have a KDE panel and that's gonna be similar to what we did with the coaching panel last month when we asked what other panels people would like. Uh, the KD uh, came up as uh, uh, frequently suggested. So we're working on a specific date for that. Um, we have all the, the speakers, but just need to line up that date and then we'll post that in Eventbrite soon. And Jennifer Mortcat, our community success manager, um, will be posting the link in the chat for that Akamai event. So we'd uh, love to have you there also. And uh, it's great to hear about the digital transformations happening in that broader community. And when I say digital transformations, certainly we have a lot of KCS transformations, but uh, we welcome whether it's community, self-service, uh, chatbot, auto support, anything that is related to your digital transformation. And again, whether it be uh, successes, uh, strategies and tips, um, as well as ditches people encounter and how to avoid them. So if you'd like to present at a KCS in action, please reach out to me and we'll get you on the calendar and I'll post my contact information in chat. But I'm very excited about today's event and pleased to pass it over to Romain. Thank you very much uh, for this great introduction. So uh, now I'm going to move to the introduction slide, to the agenda. So I will uh, start with uh, an introduction of myself and then an introduction about PTC and the support services introduction at PTC. Then I will talk about the uh, knowledge organization at PTC in 2019 and the challenges we were facing at that time. And you'll see uh, how we have been able to overcome those challenges by implementing a new role, as you introduced earlier, the digital success engineers that are combining the KDE and coach role. So let's move on quickly about um, introducing myself. So I started at PTC in 2009. I was a support services engineer. I was mostly delivering training. Then a couple of years later, I became the manager of the team. And then I moved to the uh, um, standard delivery team where I was managing a team of support engineer handling cases and uh, answering escalations. And then later on in 2018, I became the KDE lead. Yeah, so uh, I also was certified uh, in the KCS. So I think it was a KCS fundamental course or something like that. And in 2020, I became the manager of the digital success engineers. So now I will move to the next line and I will introduce PTC. 
So uh, PTC um, is a global leader of industrial digital transformation. So uh, we started our journey uh, 35 years ago. And we are having more than uh, 6,400 employees. So PTC is a really uh, a global company uh, uh, having customers from all over the world and from different verticals, uh, so electronical, industrial. So we are a B2C company. Uh, we are not answering usually end users issues, but we are usually uh, more dealing with uh, administrators and uh, or super users. Uh, that's PTC. We uh, have products uh, from different segments. So CAD, we have uh, products that are on-premise or on the SaaS. We have uh, PLM products. We have uh, Internet of Things products, uh, augmented reality products as well. A full suite that helps company to uh, uh, design and configure their product using the uh, power of the Internet of Things and augmented reality. So now that I'm done with the marketing slide about PTC, I'm going to move to a, a fast fact about uh, support services. So we are um, uh, ISO certified, we are KCS compliant. So everything we are doing is, is uh, compliant with KCS standards. So uh, let me um, talk about some numbers. So uh, in FY21, so we were having around 380 support agents. We were having 106,000 cases, uh, so a customer ticket. Uh, we have, as of today, 140,000 public articles and customers were doing 4.3 million searches in our knowledge base. A lot of activity here. In terms of infrastructure at PTC, so we are leveraging Salesforce to manage our cases, but also to author our articles. We have implemented machine translation last year. So we are translating automatically our English articles in Japanese and Chinese. And soon we are going to add the European languages as well. We have a custom article viewer and a custom feedback mechanism. So that's, that's us, support services. And we deliver support in different channels. And the first one uh, is self-service. So we uh, offer a federated search. So customers can search in our knowledge base and they can uh, find articles, of course, but also community posts. Uh, help center documents, uh, reference documents. We also offer community support. So uh, for some type of cases, we are routing customers to the community and we have engineers uh, acting as moderator and answering uh, uh, customers within the community. A bit more classical, we have assisted support. Eh? We have the 380 uh, uh, agent that are delivering support over the phone and uh, using WebEx or, or Teams. Uh, in terms of uh, proactive recommendation, so if customers are connected, uh, we are uh, analyzing their logs. And uh, when we find issues in their config files or in their logs, we are sending recommendations to them so that they, they fix their settings or uh, updates their software or their drivers or, or anything that uh, we could uh, recommend to solve their issue easily and being proactive. If they are not connected, uh, they can still upload their logs files so that we also uh, provide recommendations uh, if they don't want or they, if they can't uh, connect their system to our environment. And the last support channel that we offer is just before they uh, open a case with us, we uh, intercept their demand. So we have uh, an artificial intelligence uh, using natural language processing. So we are learning from the past case description and the link between uh, the case and the article to propose similar 
uh, article based on similar words used in their description. Uh, we also ask them to provide some keywords. So we, uh, we perform a search on the, the keywords they provide. And finally, if they provide an error message, we also have a, an engine that is uh, going to uh, search within our knowledge base and retrieve the articles. And everything is combined and prioritized so that we uh, deliver what we think is the best self-service resource to the customers or articles, community posts or, or documentation. So that's our channels. And now I'm going to talk about knowledge. So in 2019, we were set up this way. So we had a, a full-time knowledge manager. We had 37 KDEs. So they were working part-time. So uh, only uh, they only had one day per week dedicated to uh, knowledge optimization. We had 86 coaches also being part-time, dedicating only uh, one day per week. And uh, we were having 380 support agents around that. Huh? Our quality framework at that time, so we were doing uh, article quality index every quarter for all support agents. So uh, within our article quality index, we are also, so we were assessing uh, the content standard. We were also uh, making sure that the article was clear, accurate technically, but also safe. We were uh, uh, making sure that the article was following uh, the uh, recommendation in terms of formatting, bulleting. And we were also uh, assessing if the article was improved with new information shared within the case. So everything was included within the AQI at that time. And we were doing that on a quarterly basis for all support agents. We were also having a, a, a council. So a, a Western one, including Europe, North America managers and the knowledge manager. An APAC council where the uh, knowledge manager was also uh, attending. We had KD meetings, so kind of KD council, where we had a, a monthly uh, discussion uh, among KDs. And uh, we were having a coach meeting. So in each region, there was a, 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 a couch council. So a lot of interaction between those teams. And, uh, and you can see uh, right from this slide that uh, we were having one coach for uh, uh, for support agent, we were having uh, one KDE for 10 support agent. So a lot, a lot of people uh, being on support for the others and uh, trying to help others to create quality content. And therefore, uh, all these different people were bringing a lot of challenges. And uh, the first one, uh, so related to KDEs, was that it was difficult uh, to uh, uh, share new processes or to share new practice with, uh, with those KDEs and also making sure that those KDEs were adopting those uh, new practices. We were relying on managers to ensure it was done properly, but there were a lot of managers, a lot of regions, so a lot of extra work to ensure everything was coordinated and executed properly. A second challenge that we were getting at that time that was that uh, the coaches and KDs were not really aligned in terms of uh, knowledge capture assessment. And I will uh, deep dive about that in the next slide. And finally, and for me, that was the biggest challenge at that time. Uh, the KDs were support agent uh, most of the time. So they are, um, their priority was to deliver best-in-class support. So uh, their involvement within the KG program was related to the amount of staggering cases they had in their queue. And so uh, from a KG to another, the amount of work and the quality of their work was 
unpredictable. So it was really, really different from one to another. So that's where my, my biggest challenges. And if we look at the coaches, at that time, they were sharing exactly the same uh, issues. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, they were coaching people from different product lines. So uh, that was uh, uh, adding uh, an extra complexity and uh, they were not really able to judge if the engineers were capturing the right information or if the article was the right one uh, and what the right resolution article or was just a, a reference article. So their point of view in terms of knowledge capture was very different from KDs. So KDs were doing non versus new, so a bit similar from AQI, assessing uh, if the article was the right one, it was updated properly, and we were having very different results. Um, nevertheless, uh, they were focusing, therefore, their activity on making sure that the uh, article was following the content standard, that the formatting of the article was good, that the bulleting was good. So the quality and the, the fact that the article was clear was, was, was there at that time. Eh? We were having a 98% uh, success rate uh, within our AQIs. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that started to become boring for coaches uh, because uh, uh, each time they were doing AQIs, everything was was fine, was perfect. Uh, they were not really seeing the impact they were having on 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 TSs on on support agent. Uh, we they were rarely having people to ramp up uh, to on KCS to start from scratch. So it was really, really becoming a challenge to get volunteers to become a coach at that time. So all of those challenges uh, and the lack of focus uh, resulted in an erosion of the knowledge quality and quantity. Uh, so uh, we were seeing, seeing our improve rate uh, and our creation rate uh, trending down. Uh, quarter after quarters, years after years. And we were also seeing people always linking the same generic article. And uh, so we were what I call uh, falling in the generic linking trap where uh, engineers were linking how to article uh, instead of creating new articles, capturing the symptoms or errors faced by customers. And therefore, it was really, really impossible for KDEs to create relevant uh, resolution paths because they were only having uh, uh, data related to a generic article. And worse than that, our digital tools were learning from the link between the resolution article and the case subject. And therefore, they were becoming less and less effective. And at that time, uh, we... Uh, we had KDs performing a non versus new analysis, and only 50% of the cases were capturing all knowledge. So either the, the article was updated with new information or with uh, so symptoms, errors, workaround, or the article was not a resolution article, it was just a generic article, or even worse, it, it was a a reference article, not even a resolution one. So we had to, to react uh, at that time and uh, we, uh, we had to do a, a reboot. Um, so we did a reboot of our KD program, but not only, uh, we, we did a, a complete reboot of our knowledge management setup. And we started to make some investment. And the first investment we made was to hire a senior knowledge director uh, so Pierre, who is uh, uh, today in the call, and he, he completely transformed the uh, knowledge management organization. And uh, everything that I'm presenting today, today sorry, is a result of uh, his initiatives. The first thing he did he was to create this digital success engineers team that I'm going to introduce later on. And therefore, he needed the manager. So he, he asked me uh, to, to join his team. And uh, he uh, also uh, revisited the council and he created a unique council from all regions and from all departments. 
So let me uh, deep dive in the organizational change. So the uh, support engineers, so the support agents, we are still focused on handling cases and creating articles. But uh, Pierre reinforced the fact that article management was fully integrated within the way engineers were handling cases. So we launched, launched a campaign. So we, we named it uh, Knowledge is Our Day Job. So we included a refresher for support services managers, a review of KPIs on a regular basis with support delivery director, support delivery director sorry. Um, we rebooted also, we did a reboot of the uh, recognition framework. And also we uh, refreshed our article management because we included it within the case management process. So really we, um, we reinforce the fact that a KCS is not something we do on top of case handling, but it's how we solve cases. And therefore, we revisited the way we were supporting those uh, uh, support agents to make sure that they were creating quality content. So we created this team of digital success engineers having the role of KD and coach. And uh, they were uh, focused on training new hires and coaching new hires. They were focused as well on performing customer demand analysis, creating the knowledge base, optimizing the knowledge base. And also they were the one doing the quality control. So the uh, non versus new at the knowledge domain level, but also at the individual level. So something that is uh, very important to mention is that this is a, a full-time job but we are rotating every uh, four months. So uh, why four months? Uh, it's uh, because uh, ramping up people doing those activities is taking time. And we need to ensure that we are uh, having a right, uh, well, we are having consistency between a DSC to another. So there is a, a transition period between those, uh, those two DSCs from the same uh, knowledge domain. And also it's, it's a challenge from the delivery team uh, to uh, get uh, rid of a resource during four months uh, for free like that. So it's a, it's a negotiation that we had with the delivery team and they, they agreed on, on four months. So now let's deep dive on what are their activities. So as I mentioned earlier, the KCS1, so the new hires were uh, coached coached by digital success engineers, but all the KCS free engineers, so the publisher, people who are uh, having access rights to create and publish a public document to, uh, to the customers, uh, they were not getting uh, individual, individual coach anymore. Uh, they were leveraging what we call the uh, KCS coaching desk. So it's, uh, it's a forum within our internal community. And uh, they can ask questions about the KCS practices and they can also request feedback on articles. Is my article findable? Is my article understandable? And everybody is encouraged to contribute within this, uh, this, this forum and uh, the former coach, but uh, the DSCs as well. And the DSCs are actually uh, uh, doing the, the moderation of the, the forum. So that was a big change and we stopped uh, doing AQI every quarter for all support agents eh, because it was useless in our organization and with the maturity we were getting. So we changed completely our quality framework. So uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the fact that the, the, the AQIs were not providing the value we were expecting and we, uh, we created uh, instead uh, a yearly certification. So uh, it's a, a short video with all the changes we implemented recently, but also a, a focus on the practices we want to highlight. 
and uh, there is a, a test that uh, all the uh, support agents need to uh, to pass. It's a, it's a yearly test, and uh, of course we are giving a certificate at the end of the certification. And we were doing the new versus known now every two months, so focusing on main product knowledge domains. And we are now able to uh, identify issues related to, uh, to a product domain, and we are able to tailor our recommendation. And we are doing also individual uh, new versus none, so uh, a bit similar to uh, what we were doing in the past with AQIs. But for a specific knowledge domain worker, uh, sorry, a specific knowledge worker, if we are identifying that there is an issue with uh, his KPI, or uh, if uh, this engineer uh, is uh, outstanding within our quality reports, so if he created uh, too many uh, crap articles, <laughs> we, uh, we are doing uh, an analysis uh, on his uh, KCS behaviors. And therefore, we are providing a tailored next step for this, uh, for this engineer. So everything here is done by, by the digital success engineer. So that I'm going now to share a bit more details about their day-to-day -day activities. And so they are spending maybe 30% of their time in doing coaching and training. So it's... Um, it's not equal from a DSC to another because we have some products where we have a lot of new hires and some other products that are pretty mature with almost no new hires. They are doing non versus new, so at the product level or at the individual level. They are doing article feedback handling, so they are uh, gathering all the feedback received on a specific domain knowledge. So in the past, it was, it was spread over all the engineers handling the product. So it was pretty rare when, a cust when an engineer had to handle a feedback. So now all the feedback are shared uh, with the domain expert. So he's getting a, an overview of all the feedback for his domain. He is also handling the web survey or he or she. Uh, in terms of uh, knowledge-based monitoring, we are also doing some pre proactive work and so uh, before customers are complaining about the quality of an article, the DSCs are reviewing uh, the ones that are newly created or improved. And also it depends the, uh, the number of uh, newly uh, articles created. So sometimes they are going to be able to review all of them and, same term, and sometimes they are going to cherry pick and based on the title of the article, ah, this one looks suspicious they are going to, to pick that one and, and, and look at it. And finally, as I mentioned, they are, they are doing knowledge optimization. So analyzing customer demand, what are the uh, most viewed article, the most reused article, what are the ones getting a lot of negative feedback so that they can curate the knowledge base or request product enhancements. And also now start to work on advanced knowledge content type. So I will um, deep dive on that in a couple of slides. Now I'm going to share the agenda of the digital success engineer. So there are things that they are doing on a daily basis, uh, coaching, article feedback, web surveys, knowledge-based monitoring. Uh, so they book their time uh, uh, during the morning to do those kind of activities. And then the rest of the time, they are doing either ad hoc activities, right? if they have to perform an individual non versus new, or if they have to deliver a training. And there are activities that they are doing on a regular basis, right? recurring activities. So the non versus new is one of them. Every two months, we are doing that. Then they are doing an analysis of the results. They are sharing the results with the proper management team and the relevant engineers. So uh, if they uh, spot any issue while doing the non versus new, they can share best practices right away with the entire team. Um, so that's pretty efficient. They are doing also some knowledge-based curation and they are working on advanced knowledge resources that I'm going to deep dive later. So really the benefits 
uh, from uh, having digital success engineers is that the quality control is performed by people having domain expertise. Uh, so they are able to share best practices and coaching best practices really tailored to uh, the uh, people that are handling the same uh, products. They have now time to work on processes enhancement. So in the past, uh, as uh, everyone was coach, everyone was KDE, nobody was really taking ownership on uh, raising uh, enhancement requests. So now we have a team that is dedicated to that. So we are really able to make things uh, become a reality. And they have time to work on advanced knowledge resources. So I've said enough time that I'm going to talk about that so that I'm going to introduce it. So, uh, you know, we have articles, of course, but articles are flat. Huh? So they can also reference an article uh, when we have hub articles or resolution paths, so customers can jump from art an article to another. But it's not really convenient for customer. It's uh, really uh, not a nice look and feel. So what we came up with was uh, a web uh, pages with uh, advanced logic so that customers can navigate uh, those web pages easily and jump from a section to another. So we have uh, for um, uh, issues where we have uh, common causes or uh, common symptoms, but different causes and different resolutions, we created uh, resolution paths, so troubleshooters. And we also have what we call central resource page, where uh, also we embedded some logic within the web pages so that the customers can start from their journey or from their situation. So I want maybe to, uh, to install uh, the new software, but I also want to install the new license, or I want to move an old license. I want also to move my license server. So customers is going to pick what is, uh, is the current situation. And we are going to display only the relevant information without having to uh, read 380 pages uh, to uh, learn how to, um, to install the product. And, here, those two resources combine, for example, for one of our products, uh, help us to reduce by 20% the number of installation cases. And without having dedicated resources to work on that, uh, that would have been completely impossible. So the results really are, are very positive for us. Uh, we have uh, an increased number of uh, articles created, increased number of improved uh, articles. And we are also saying that people are uh, jumping over the generic linking trap and uh, uh, we are not reusing always the same uh, generic and how-to article because now we are at 80% knowledge full capture. So engineers are now back at linking uh, the proper resolution article, updating the uh, proper article as well, because we have experts reviewing their work and sharing feedback on a regular basis. So it's extremely uh, positive for us. But for me, uh, what is the most gratifying is really uh, the feedback from the DSCs that we are getting. Uh, they really, really enjoy this new mission uh, because um, they are doing different things that they are not used to do. I usually, uh, they were coming in the, in the morning, receiving their load of cases, and uh, they were getting a lot of pressure. So now, during four months, they have time to work on different things, to learn new skills. And they are doing uh, coaching. They are doing data mining. So uh, they become also uh, some POC. Uh, so... Uh, point of contact regionally, they have to share results, so they have to enhance their uh, presentation skills, their uh, uh, data mining skills. So it's really, really uh, gratifying, and uh, we are getting a lot of people who uh, try to come back uh, within the, the DSC uh, program. 
So the ultimate benefit for us is that really uh, they are becoming role model when they come back to the um, uh, to the delivery team. Uh, they they are now becoming KCS advocates uh, because they, they want to come back, so they promote uh, the uh, the mission to others. They uh, also increase their network and they are working with people that they never had to work with in the past, people from different regions, people from different product lines. So they are getting a, a new perspective. Uh, it increased their reputation because now they work with R&D, with uh, product management, with uh, TS delivery management. So it's uh, increasing their, their reputation. And therefore it's really also uh, seeing by them as a move uh, as a move forward in their career path uh, because they are, they are learning a lot of new things and they are also increasing a lot their soft skills, uh, creating presentation, presenting to people, uh, coaching people, but also data mining, having a data centric approach to things. Uh, we are now uh, having a, a, an overview of all issues faced by, by engineers, but we are only focusing on the real one, the one having really a big impact and therefore everything is, uh, is based on data analysis. Um, and there was also something uh, that we were afraid of. We were afraid that, that engineers will say, uh, I'm losing my technical skills. But uh, after all the surveys we sent uh, after the their rotation, none of them told us that they were they, they lost their technical skills um, because they had the opportunity to work on web surveys, article feedback, and also advanced knowledge resources. So they deep dive some of their uh, of their technical skills. So it's uh, really really uh, a positive uh, change that we uh, we implemented. Uh, Everything is not uh, green, of course. Eh? We 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 uh, we have some challenges, of course. And, and the first one is to get names eh, from delivery team. Even if we have a lot of volunteers, uh, managers are, are struggling to get uh, people out of their team during four months. So uh, every four months, it's a, it's a negotiation with delivery directors uh, to get names. Eh? So it's if you want to do the same. You need to be aware about that. That's uh, definitely a challenge. Uh, we continue to uh, uh, to have the hunt for the right article to update. Uh, as uh, at KDEs, this is uh, the main focus. The main uh, objective is to find the right article to update. And um, when we uh, transition the knowledge optimization, so the uh, customer demand analysis uh, from a DSC to another, it's also uh, a challenge uh, to ensure that we are not redoing always the same analysis uh, quarter after quarter. So we have some uh, hints, some ideas on how to overcome those challenges. So if at some point in the, in the future, uh, we can have another session to talk about those challenges and how to overcome them. So thank you very much for listening. And now uh, you can ask all the questions you have. And I think I'm good on time. Yeah, you're great on time. And uh, Pierre's gone and answered many of those questions, but we still have um, several questions in the chat as well as um, you know, please others bring them up. So uh, Pierre, do you want to come off mute? And- um... I think I just did that. Uh, so Romain, we, we had some questions about the um, uh, content of our uh, knowledge health check slash uh, non versus new, especially like uh, what are you doing besides uh, checking non versus new and, and uh, how we, checking compliance. So I think we, we had some questions around that that maybe you can clarify. Sure. So uh, within the non versus new, uh, so we are doing everything. So we are, there are three sections, I will say within the non versus new. The first section 
is uh, the one that is uh, within the AQIs. So making sure that the article is compliant with the content standard and the KCS phrasing guidelines. Yeah? So that's the first section uh, where we also assess if the article is clear, accurate, technically, if uh, the article is following the uh, formatting, the structure uh, that we implemented. So that's the first uh, section. The second section is the knowledge capture assessment, where we assess if the engineer improved the article with new information captured within the case. So uh, new symptoms, new workarounds. And also we assess if the article that is linked is the solution for the question asked by the customer. And so is the article linked to the case? Is the proper resolution article? And the last section that we are usually doing only for KCS1 is really uh, around the writing skills, uh, how to reformulate uh, issues, how to uh, um, um, uh, write articles that are really uh, clear, but uh, from a, a grammar perspective and uh, from a writing skills perspective. So we had also many tooling questions about what we are doing in Salesforce or outside of Salesforce. Um, uh, so maybe you, you can also clarify how this known versus new uh, aspect uh, works, if you want, Romain. Sure. So. Uh... Uh, the data mining uh, is done outside of Salesforce. Uh, we, uh, we are leveraging uh, ClickSense and we have uh, a dashboard for KDEs where they are able to see uh, the article that are the most reused and the most reused as resolution article. Uh, they can see uh, also the views on those articles and they can see uh, what are the articles having uh, the most negative feedback? So a customer clicking on, no, this article is not helpful or this article is not clear or uh, not working for me. So they have uh, all those uh, information. They have also the possibility uh, to uh, deep dive in the customer's feedback, in the queries made by uh, our customers. So uh, they can pick an article and see uh, what are the, the queries made within the knowledge base who uh, display this article. And we can see the ranking of the article so they can improve the findability by adding extra keywords or uh, adding synonyms within our knowledge base. And uh, yeah, the source of the, uh, of the visit, the view, etc. So that's, um, that's done outside of, uh, of Salesforce uh, within the ClickSense. But uh, it's a lot of manual work. It's a lot of uh, deep dive investigation. So we are really uh, trying to facilitate the life of uh, our KDEs, well, DSEs, by creating custom reports. So we, we are implementing that at the moment so that um, when a DSC is improving an article or doing an analysis on an article, he, uh, he had an hashtag within Salesforce so that the article is gone and uh, we don't have it in the next report uh, for a couple of, uh, of months because it's a done deal. We improve this article. We are now going to monitor if the article, uh, the changes made in the article is having the right impact or if we need to uh, to have a, a second look at this uh, at this article. Does many this... many questions on tooling again on, in the in the chat. So maybe we will need another session on that. Uh, there was one question from Janet on the process. Which percentage of time are the DSCs devoting to their KDA work? during their four months rotation. Uh, so if, if you want to uh, maybe get back to the, yeah. uh, to the slide. time split exactly. uh, a couple of slides ago, this might be a good, um, a good slide to answer some of the additional questions we had. Yes, this one. Yeah, so it, usually it's 10% uh, of their time by KCS1 uh, in terms of coaching and training. 
So usually they have two to three uh, coaches. So it's representing 30% of their time. Uh, and the knowledge optimization uh, depends on that. Uh, so uh, it's uh, usually 40% of their time. Uh, and here I'm including within all of those activities, the ramp up and, uh, that is uh, necessary for them to learn the data mining tools, but also the data mining skills and techniques. So uh, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a long process. And uh, that's why it's good when uh, DSCs want to come back because uh, they are up and running more easily and uh, in an uh, efficient way. What are the feedback mechanisms used by end users to provide feedback? So we have, um, uh, within the article viewer, right, we have a, a pop-up that is uh, always available. And actually we are going to, to, to change it pretty soon, but uh, customers can say uh, yes or no, this article was helpful or not. And can uh, also, uh, if they say elect, no, it was not helpful. We ask another question, uh, the why, uh, was it not clear? Uh, was it uh, not working for you or was it not what you were looking for? Uh, and, uh, and they can provide a, a feedback. And we have another feedback mechanism uh, for internal people that uh, we always display at the bottom of the article viewer where we ask internal people to uh, provide suggestions on how to improve this article. So R&D, consulting, and uh, other departments can provide uh, additional feedback so that we can incorporate it uh, within the article. And within the article viewer also, we uh, display uh, some impact so that we encourage people to, uh, uh, to create articles. So we, we provide the views, on this article, we provide also the number of times this article was used to solve the case. And we uh, display the people who contributed to this article. So it's uh, rewarding them uh, uh, live and uh, encouraging them to, to contribute. And I could talk about recognition uh, for uh, again, one or two hours <laughs> if you start on this topic. A uh, couple of extra questions. Do we have a formal training program at the beginning of the rotation? Yeah, there is a learning pass. Uh, uh, so uh, first of all, uh, two weeks before they start their rotation, we perform a kickoff. So we introduce a mission. Uh, the week after, we ask them to uh, consume some online training, so refresher, KCS training. So they do not take the entire uh, new hire uh, certification, but they focus on uh, on the most important pieces. Uh, and then they have a couple of weeks where they are going to uh, uh, refresh their mind if they were coach in the past, or we are going to uh, uh, start uh, their coaching uh, ramp up. So they, were, they will have a coach the coach uh, to ensure they are doing a good job. Uh, there is a transition period between the former DSC and the new DSC so that we ensure consistency. So they do the non versus new together uh, so that uh, they uh, look into the same information and, and really uh, uh, keep uh, the same level of expectations. Uh, so yeah, there is very uh, formal learning path that they need to go through and get certified at the end. Uh, to, uh, to do this job. There was an interesting question from Sebastian also asking us, how many DSCs do we have? Do we rotate the knowledge domain? How do we select them? That's a very good question. So uh, we do uh, an analysis in terms of customer demand. So where we have the highest uh, number of cases, but also the highest number of views. 
And based on that, we are requesting digital success engineers for this specific knowledge domain. So uh, we have some knowledge domain where we always have the same uh, uh, domains. And for some of them, we have uh, uh, additional GSEs for a short period of time just for, for these specific domains, just to assess the situation within this team and uh, assess the situation also with the quality of the knowledge created. So we have um, uh, some domains that are added uh, from time to time. But we have uh, usually uh, um, a group of uh, DSCs that are always uh, uh, handling the same uh, knowledge domain. So full-time seven knowledge domain experts and sometimes we add in addition some others and we have also uh, some uh, hybrid role so uh, with very small group we kept the uh, old model uh, but we still have the same challenges with those people so some of those uh, uh, kds are not really uh, doing uh, their work because they have too much work on cases and some others are doing a fantastic job. So it's still the same challenge uh, with those hybrid um, uh, small knowledge domains. Positive feedback uh, in the chat on your presentation, Romain, thank you. And I'm looking for unanswered questions. So there were question about the front end. So we are using a custom front end. We are not using Salesforce to display articles to customers. Uh, Salesforce is what we use to um, edit knowledge, but then uh, whether it's in internally or externally, we have a, a custom website that displays article. And I can try to, um, to share the article viewer if you want with people. So uh, this is uh, our, our custom article viewer. And you can see at the bottom, uh, because I am an internal people, I can say, yeah, this is what I needed or something wrong is in, in this article. And I can uh, provide uh, a feedback uh, for the knowledge workers to improve this, um, this article. And we had many people asking questions about recognition. So uh, I'm going to use the opportunity that you're showing the article um, object here. So one of the things we did uh, to, to help with recognition was what you see in the gray bar uh, around the middle of the screen, where we are now showing everybody who contributed to an article, as well as showing some live metadata about uh, the impact of this article, such as customer views, useful rating from customers, useful rating from PTC employees, and case solved with this article. And we, um, we, we did a reboot also of the recognition program. We are leveraging gamification. So we, um, uh, we provide badges within the community and uh, we are uh, uh, electing uh, KCS champions, so knowledge guardians every quarter. We also uh, promote uh, teamwork. So we have uh, uh, teams recognition and we also included the managers uh, within uh, this recognition. So uh, that was missing in the past. So um, yeah, uh, uh, um, a lot of work has been done to recognize people on the impact they were having because it was one of the challenges uh, with KCS. Uh, seeing the impact of an engineer versus another is extremely complicated. So you need to have a lot of data, a lot of KPIs, and uh, uh, that's very complex to be able to really recognize people properly. Uh, so uh, the recognition framework is very complex so that we are doing a, a okay job in recognizing people. So with um, three minutes left, maybe uh, two last questions. One, which is, I think, uh, very interesting, and we forgot to cover that, Romain, 
was um, how do you know if a DSC is doing a good job, which KPIs uh, are we using to um, uh, evaluate their, their contribution and performance? And another one, maybe the, the wrapping one would be, um, what does the future look like? What do we want to change uh, after all of those changes? So uh, for the first one, uh, so we have uh, what we call a mission sheet. So they have a diary. Uh, where they are going to put all the things they are doing uh, uh, above their their mission. So uh, participation to project, presentation to uh, R&D request of product enhancements within this mission sheet. I'm uh, having also a lot of KPIs. Uh, so the number of articles created, improve, improved, the number of coach, the number of trainings, the feedback mechanism. So we have surveys that we are delivering to, uh, that we are um, sending to, uh, to attendees of training so that we are a feedback. We get also, we ask the coachee to get the feedback on their coach. So uh, at the middle of their rotation, we do an assessment. And then at the end of the rotation, we do another assessment. I'm uh, looking at uh, the KPI. We compare them with the previous uh, DSEs. Uh, and I, I'm evaluating them on their commitment, on the value they added. Um, uh, but I'm not get, giving uh, any uh, targets in terms of uh, article feedback to create, article feedback to handle. This is really based on the demand. And uh, so I, I'm not getting goals on that. I'm uh, looking overall uh, the work they are doing, uh, overall their KPIs and the feedback we are getting from coaches, from customers, and the impact on the customer, uh, on customer environment. And what we are going to change, uh, so <laughs> that's a good question. So still continue to improve our tools, uh, always augment and facilitate the work of the DSEs. Uh, so I, I was talking earlier about the hunt for the right article. So we have now a, a report that is combining the experience from the past DSEs uh, to be able to share the right article at the right time for the DSCs. Uh, so that's really a, a big challenge for me at the moment to improve our tools. Um, that's, uh, that's the future for the moment uh, and uh, sustain the, uh, the effort because uh, what we have seen in the past is that the, the focus was lost because we implemented a lot of different things. We implemented shared support, we implemented these warming initiatives. So KCS was uh, being uh, going in the back of the mind of the engineers and managers. So one of the main mission will be to sustain the effort, making sure that uh, it's still uh, on top of the priorities for, for everyone. All right, well, thank you. And we, um, that was an awesome presentation. So thank you very much, Romain and Pierre. And uh, what's really nice is the presentation itself, not only the recording, but uh, Romain was kind enough to let us uh, send the presentation out also. So you'll have that for all who have registered. And thank you so much. This was wonderful. And um, everyone have a great rest of the day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.